All right, welcome back to Fleck of Socks, a podcast episode 213 today on the show. We are in the final push before the election, but there have been some discrepancies. We're going to go over all those. Then Tim Waltz is making his last push to appeal to men. Wait till you hear what he's telling them. Then after that, we have some manic people in Cringe of the Week who are completely obsessed with Donald Trump because he's ruining their life. We're going to analyze that. And last but not least, in Urban Decay... The Chase Bank glitch folks are now getting sued for the money they stole plus interest, and they are not happy about it. All this and more, it's Fuck Us Talks, a podcast, episode 213, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, louder than but, words. but at the same time, words, words speak louder than actions because, because, because sometimes it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. It's what the podcast featuring Richard Grab. All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, our country witnessed a moment we'll never forget. We saw a man get shot on stage, rise up, fist in the air, and in defiance, scream, fight. Sadly, a lot of us have lost our fight, and that's exactly how the globalists want it. They want us weak, out of shape, and full of estrogen and microplastics. This is why we're excited to partner with Chalk. Chalk offers a whole lineup of products formulated to increase your energy, focus, detoxify your body, and boost your testosterone. The ingredients in Chalk's Male Vitality Stack have been clinically studied to boost free testosterone by 87% in just 21 days. Unlike the gimmicky vegetable pills or powder, you will feel the difference and they have clinical studies to back it up. And right now you can get 25% off of your Chalk subscriptions for life. Just go to chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com and use promo code FLECUS at checkout. 25% off of your subscription for life. You can cancel at any time. Chalk is made in America, and their all-American customer service team is standing by to assist you. It's time to make men's vitality great again. Get Chalk today. C-H-O-Q.com is the website. Fleckus is the promo code. Go there now. They support the show. Let's support them right back. You can also call or text them at 50 C H O Q. 3000. That's 50CHOQ3000. Thank you to sponsoring. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Chalk for sponsoring. Thank you, Chalk. I've been taking the uh, pills. They have a nice stack of really good pills, and I'm feeling great. I'm not just saying that. Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha, Sheila Jeet, all good stuff. All right. We have a packed show, as you guys can probably imagine. It's Friday. It's uh, episode 213. It's Friday the 213th. Oh, spooky. <laughs> it's very spooky. spooky. After Halloween. Yeah. It'd be pretty scary if Halloween ever fell on a thir- the Friday the 13th. I think it has. Yeah. Like all the time. Well, it'd be, it's probably rare, but that would be <laughs> spooky. All right. Uh, Want to get right into the show? Friday the 31st. Yeah. Let's get into the show. <laughs> All right, well, we have a lot to get to today. We have another non-endorsement for Kamala Harris. Uh, Breaking USA Today joins Washington Post and LA Times as latest major newspaper to decline to endorse Kamala. Sad. And you know what? Like, why were newspapers ever endorsing people? Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. Hey, we're partisan hacks. Everything (laughs) everything you read is going to be for Democrats the next four years. We just wanted to remind you. It was a good hat tip, I guess, but uh, why? It was a good hat tip for a while, and then they were also able to win these elections. And I think now they kind of see the writing on the wall. It looks like Trump is going to win. And instead of just like blowing themselves out one last time and ruining their credibility, they're going to try and lay low. And then when Trump wins, they're going to maybe be more center or middle of the road or nonpartisan. I think that's kind of the play for them. And then in the case of Jeff Bezos, he's just on so much TRT that he can't be a pussy anymore. (laughs) Um, But also, I don't want to go with that energy for this episode. Uh, We have to play like we're down. Every man. I keep seeing stuff about men and women, and women are outperforming men at the polls. And it's like, remember that Hamilton video where all the women were saying, the theater kids were like, women are gonna, 10 million more women Mm -hmm. voted last year. Like, they're rubbing it in your face. Men, this is a, a predominantly male audience. You guys really do need to go vote. Um, you can't let some woman decide the future. 
Yeah, exactly, bro. It's coming down to it. Yeah. And if you don't get involved and don't care, these ladies will think they know best and destroy the entire country. Yeah, they'll cheap shot you, snatch the ring right off your finger. Mm. Is that from some movie I didn't see? <laughs> Is that from a movie I didn't see? <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Ron Paul had a good tweet. Uh, he said, Elon cutting $2 trillion from the budget. Great deal. Start with the biggest welfare recipients, military industrial complex, pharmaceutical industrial complex. Oh, and end the Fed. And then Elon replied, needs to be done. Promising. So that is, it's good to know that it's on people's radar. Yeah. Um, obviously, end the Fed, uh, you know, if you end the Fed and you usher in a golden age and you deport the illegals and you fix the dollar and you maybe get backed by gold, you end the Fed. There's like a lot of things that could be great that come from that. Like that could be the the renaissance that we're looking for. But it also is the thing that gets you assassinated. Yeah, it's how you get a 50 caliber bullet going right into your dome and you're dead. Unfortunately, but what needs to be done needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it further. Uh, Robert De Niro. Bobby. Bobby De Niro. He was giving a speech uh, at a Kamala thing. Can you let it play? Makes me so fucking angry. <laughs> that we're here talking about a piece of shit like Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Makes him angry. He's a real tough guy. Like that time he pretended to be a mobster on that soundstage in Burbank with the lifted shoes that time. <laughs> yeah, Bobby <laughs> De Niro. His driver picked him up. He got his hair and makeup done. And then he stopped somebody out, right? He kicked somebody's ass. Yeah. 50 years ago. <laughs> exactly. And then uh, I, I, thought, I saw a funny reply. They said back in Roman times, actors were seen as just slightly above prostitutes as in social standing. I get it. I get that vibe. Uh, back then, it was all live performances. Now they've been amplified. They've been elevated too much because everybody sees the movies. But, uh, you know, there's no reason we shouldn't treat them like such. And again, this is one of those things where, all right, celebrity endorsements, right? Nobody gives a shit half the time. And we especially don't give a shit if you're chiming in two weeks later after being anti-Trump for eight years. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, same old song and dance? It's not moving the needle, Bob De Niro. Wow. Bob doesn't like Trump. He really doesn't like him. Yeah. Doesn't move the needle. No one cares. No one cares that you pretended to be a tough guy in a movie 20 years ago. Yep. All right. Tim Waltz. He's trying to make a last ditch effort to appeal to men. He went on some, um, I think it's a gay podcast. No, it's a sports show. It's like Dan Lebitard. It's an ESPN type show. Oh, I thought it was an LGBT But they are show. gay. They are okay. gay. Yes. I knew they were homosexuals. I didn't know if it was, that's what they lead with with the whole show. Exactly. All right. Let it play, please. Coach, thank you for the time. I think you might have swayed down the middle Chris here. I think uh, he's, I mean, he's, he's the voting. Porn thing. I'm pro I mean, porn. Yeah, he's, he, pro okay. Porn. Excellent yeah. work by you guys. Hey, I, you do what you do. You be you. You be you is my thought. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You stroking your shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, go. You got to make sure you stroke your shit. Coach Wolf, what are you, lefty or righty? What are you stroking? With lotion? You got anything? <laughs> what do you do? Sick shit? You watching that sick shit? Oh, we're going to let the sick shit keep happening. Don't worry. Trump will try to stop it. It's one thing to vaguely argue, uh, like, oh, Republicans want to take porn away or, you know, at least make it unattainable for kids. The first thing you do is get on the internet. You start seeing hardcore porn, right? Uh, but then you start, you know, vaguely arguing for it is one thing. But then you put a name to a face and Tim Waltz is interviewing you one on one about your right to jerk off. And you see the guy <laughs> with his face and his hat. and He's got like the unkempt beard. And he looks like the meme. Yeah. The, the Coomer meme. He he's, looks just like him. He's a Coomer. He's a Gooner. And he admitted it on his sports show. And he's like a sidekick henchman going, yeah, I'm gooning. I'm always stroking my <laughs> And Tim Waltz is like, how? Oh, what? Where? Um, yeah, and then this no, makes the sense. The vague versus specifics. When you're really looking at a guy and talking to him about stroking his shit, it it's gets a good weird. Point. There's like one thing where it's like, well, this person's a little more libertarian. Yeah. And then it's like. <laughs> Theoretical versus I'm picturing you doing it. As soon as the camera's off. Yeah. I go on my laptop. Uh, <laughs> Straight to my phone. And it, uh, this actually works for the men in the Democrat base because they are, you know, weak and disenfranchised and constantly stroking their shit. It's like one of the only forms of enjoyment they can get. Yeah. And if you look back at the campaign of like how they've appealed to men, they've done it with like legalizing weed, Tim Waltz playing video games, mm-hmm. Tim Waltz talking about stroking your shit. Uh, abortion. Yeah. And it's kind of like these are the issues for the Democrat men that like makes them go, yeah, I'll pull the lever for that guy. Um, and it just, you know, it makes sense. They want these people to be adult children. 
yeah. who are dependent on the government and aren't like able to lead their own lives and do anything substantial. Uh, so all these types of things, weed and video games and abortion and porn, it's all under the same degenerate umbrella and the same like arrested development, per, uh, perpetual adolescence. Well, yeah. And it's a diversion of masculine energy, right? Like, oh, go feel accomplished. You killed 20 guys in Call of Duty, you know? Uh, oh, you just had sex with the hottest woman ever. You struck yeah. your shit <laughs> in the computer room. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not totally against video games or anything like that. Um, and that's a losing proposition for a lot of, you know, young men too, who we just tried to say, go out and vote. Um, but just the general theme of it, weed, crypto, you know, what do they think of you? Porn. Mm -hmm. It gets ugly quick. It's all like low testosterone activities. Yeah. And that comes from the activities themselves, but also the environmental poisons that have been spread and given to us in our food and environment for years. Yeah. And Tim Waltz wants to hear all about it. What yeah. Are you doing? <laughs> Send me a video of you yeah. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Tim Waltz had another floppy moment, maybe the last flop before the uh, election. Yeah. He's pointing, he's flopping. Wait for the kick. <laughs> he's losing his shit up there. Whenever yeah. his hands on one kick, there's one kick. And we're going to let it play because he's going to walk over here. This is some real theater shit. And boom, kick number two. You see that? That was a subtle one. But. Yeah. So he's flopping. And whenever he holds her hand up, he has to use his feet. So we've we've already discussed that. Going like this? Very gay. Never seen anyone do that. No wonder he's talking about stroking his shit on the gay podcast. Yeah, that makes sense now. All right, let's get into some voting discrepancies. I don't know how uh, YouTube's going to handle this. I've been, like, deleted and censored and demonetized and taken down in the past. Yeah. But I think this is all allegedly. Okay. And it's a comedy podcast. Sure. Um, but first things first, In uh, there was an F1 race over the weekend mm -hmm. in a Pennsylvania local TV, and they accidentally posted the results for the Pennsylvania election, 52% Harris, 47% Trump, with 100% of the votes counted. Yeah, actually, they slipped up on that one. <laughs> so I don't understand how it's an accident. And it's not like it's the graphic from the last election because that would have been Trump Biden. Yeah. This is a new graphic with specific numbers. And it just, I don't know, maybe it was a whistleblower who like said, hey, like they're planning something, get it out early. So everyone's talking about it. Yeah. I don't know. It could just be one lunatic leftist woman who's like, well, for the test, I'm going to have her winning by five points. Nobody has her up by five points in Pennsylvania. So. I don't know. I, I'm less schizo than you on that, obviously, but still, it's like a time like this, you're slipping up like that. It's not a great look. Not a great look at all in Pennsylvania. We have a lot of more Pennsylvania stuff, too. We're going to go down just the list. We're going to go a little fast because there's a lot yeah. to get to. Colorado uh, had an issue, too. The uh, Secretary of State, the person in charge of the elections, leaked the passwords to the voting machines and it was left up for months. Passwords for Colorado's voting systems were posted online for anyone to see for months. If you knew where to look, Democratic Secretary of State Jenna Griswold's office apparently posted them online by accident. Griswold's office found out last Thursday and had not told the county clerks who actually run elections. Then the Colorado Republican Party went public today demanding that Griswold secure those voting machines. Wow. And that Griswold woman was the same person who tried to get Trump off the Colorado ballot in general. Of course. So uh, we can. And she didn't self report the issue. The GOP, the Republicans in Colorado had to, like, raise the red flag and uh, not self reporting is another issue. And it was like a hidden tab in an Excel document that just said secret password. <laughs> Voting machine passwords, top secret. So no they just, entry, they secret dump, password. Yeah, they just dump them into an Excel document, which is crazy. Very crazy. And then I, I have that schizo theory that if they can't win fair and square with cheating, that they're going to just try to botch the whole election. And that kind of falls into that category where if the passwords and stuff are out, maybe Colorado can has to do a revote. or yeah, they can't, We can't certify anything or exactly, something. Exactly. And they can't certify anything. And then... Joe Biden steps down and then Kamala Harris is the president and then she'll figure out who the president is. I don't want to go too uh, dark and black pilled, but when you see something like that and you see who's in charge of the Colorado elections, that horrible woman. Yeah. Makes you kind of wonder. Um, all right. Next, we have a local news story about ballots uh, being dropped in an apartment complex. This is in Washington. 
Sen and I moved in here on October 3rd. On Friday, Jamie Visaya says she went down to check her mailbox. There was about nine voter registration ballots that were not mine. So I thought that was strange. So I ended up returning them to the post office here. But to her surprise, again last night, there was another stack in there. This time, seven different ballots. Long name, Mohammed. Um, last name, Mus Mustafa. She only lives in a two-bedroom apartment. Most of the ballots are addressed to different last names, but all have one thing in common, her unit number. Management said no one's lived here for three months. Maybe the people who were registered at her apartment before didn't update their address through USPS when they moved. But still, Visaya wonders, why didn't I get all of their other mail forwarded here? That's not good. Mustafa, Muhammad. Mustafa and Muhammad. We know how that's going to go. Just, you know, ballots, registrations, going anywhere. We're firing from the hip. It's so frustrating to see shit like this. And Careless with ballots is like, pisses me off. That's what really, because then they just dump them. They go, oh, here's an apartment complex. Here's 100 ballots. And it's like that woman's probably going to go vote like a normal person. Yeah. And now you have like 100 chances to have your vote canceled out by Mustafa Muhammad. It's so disrespectful to an actual voter to have all this shit floating around. And fortunately, so far, that's Colorado and Washington State, which aren't exactly swinging anywhere. Yeah. But, you know, if you don't think that type of stuff is happening in the swing states, uh, you are mistaken, right? Yeah. And then it happened in Pennsylvania as well. Uh, we have this here. It says the Bethesda Mission Men's Shelter in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. More than two times people registered voters than beds. 90% plus registered Democrats, most with zero voting history. And yeah. then it got fact-checked by uh, Twitter. It mm -hmm. got community noted, and it said, yeah, this looks sketchy, but these are actually homeless people, and this is where they registered their home as. Yeah. And then you kind of wonder, oh, I didn't realize homeless people were so politically involved, and then they're over 90% Democrat. Yeah. You understand the little scheme that they do. And that's what they've been doing in cities probably for as long as there's been homeless people. Yeah. Well, it's to me, it's not shocking that the uh, Democrats own the homeless vote. Yeah. They let me camp <laughs> out. They keep giving me stuff, you know, but um, the fact that they're so active and organized, that's uh, ringing an alarm bell. They're all voting Democrat. Yeah. Wow. To the same address. Mm -hmm. um, and there was an issue in Michigan too, um, where they had one voter ID with 29 separate votes and then the good news is Laura Trump and the Republican National Committee like immediately filed a lawsuit and got it figured out. And it was a glitch in the system. Yeah. And those votes aren't going to be counted. Glitch in the system, yeah. you know, but glitch in your favor. <laughs> Twenty seven yeah. for Democrats. Do we ever get a glitch that goes our way? I have not seen one yet. And then we had a, a Bucks County issue too, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, where people were getting turned away because they were in line for hours and they were getting turned away before the polls were closed. And then the Trump team sued and then immediately got the uh, polling places open till five o'clock and extended um, and everyone's now back in line and voting. Yeah. So it's good to see this time around. It's less, we're reactive, but it's not reactive post-election. Mm -hmm. It's reactive leading into it. So whenever there's an issue, we're hitting it with lawsuits. I'm a lot more confident, obviously, in 2024 than I am in 2020. We had like a loose law fair in 2020 that didn't really work out, and it was it was all after the election, after the fact. So yeah. you can't really do anything. Everyone certified it. After the fact is tough. It's hard to win after the fact, which is why uh, I think Republicans are encouraging early voting more this year than in 2020 because, like, something's going to happen on Election Day somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. And then there's been a lot of voter roll issues. Uh, here we have Libs a TikTok tweet. Breaking Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three to allow Virginia to purge non-citizens from voter rolls. Big win for election integrity. So they had a bunch of illegals on the voter rolls, and then Supreme Court voted six to three to get them off. Yeah, what three people would vote against getting illegals off of voter roll? I can picture them: the Sotomayor, <laughs> the Kanji Brown Jackson, the Green Jean Pierre yeah. one. Yeah, um, and so that's something that we had covered previously on the show. Alabama uh, had done the tried to do the same thing, but uh, we covered the issue, which is like it needs to be done ninety days before the election or something. And the Department of Justice, Biden's DOJ, was suing the Secretary of State and the state of Alabama to leave non-citizens on the voter roll. And so um, just for the state of Virginia, obviously, is uh, who brought that case to the Supreme Court and won 
And so hopefully that just lets uh, other states do the exact same thing. Because again, the Department of Justice suing because you're trying to take non-citizens off the voter roll. You're like, huh, why? We're wasting tax dollars on this? It doesn't make any sense at all. But that's what they're up to, right? Mm -hmm. Lawsuits for things that you don't think anyone would, would try to win, right? Any means necessary. Yeah. And then we had a Chinese national who voted in Michigan illegally. Yeah, Chinese student to face criminal charges for voting in Michigan. Ballot will apparently count. A University of Michigan student who is from China and not a U.S. citizen allegedly voted early Sunday in Ann Arbor uh, and is being charged with two crimes, but they're just still counting it. They have no way of pulling that ballot out. Mm. And so I think this, guys, voter fraud has occurred. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think for the YouTube and whatever, this Chinese national who they're saying they can't get the ballot out. I think we're now protected. Voter fraud has occurred and there's nothing. There's we can at do least about it. one fraudulent vote in Michigan. So now we can talk about it. And then yeah. uh, in Michigan. So from how it's playing out, polling wise, it's looking good for us. But obviously it's not over. Make sure you go out and vote early. Yeah, um, they're going to try to win it. With Michigan, Pennsylvania, and then whatever the Wisconsin, other, Wisconsin, and whatever the other states are that don't have voter ID, um, and there is a path to victory there. Yeah, there is a very slim path to victory. They're going to try to do Michigan, Pennsylvania, and I think New Mexico, and then the West Coast states, and like kind of, you'll see the whole country will be red except for like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states, and then we need she one wins. of those. We need one of those yeah. states: Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. If we win Pennsylvania, we win. Mm-hmm. If we lose Pennsylvania, they could we par- need Wisconsin. They could parlay it. Yeah. We need Wisconsin, and we need to run North Carolina, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona. Yeah. So, so we'll see. Uh, speaking of Georgia, we had some issues there that was covered uh, by show watcher Jesse Waters today in Georgia. A judge ruled that election officials have to certify results, even if voter fraud is suspected. And around the state, Democrats are suing to prevent drop box surveillance. Hand count. Hmm. <laughs> so drop box surveillance. They're suing for that. Biden's Department of Justice is suing for uh, non-citizens on the voter rolls. Like, I couldn't imagine being on either of those sides and having integrity or honesty, right? So you want non-citizens on the voter rolls, you want them to certify it no matter what happens, and then you're not allowed to film the drop boxes. So you can kind of like... (laughs) It's a very dark picture being painted. Connect the dots on what they're trying to do here. Yeah, and then you go over to the other apartment complex and there's just ballots everywhere. There's registrations and ballots. You're like, you got a whole box. So it's very fucking ugly, and if we win, we obviously need to clean this up. You know, mm-hmm. this is totally unacceptable. There needs to be like some new federal rules and uh, vote in person with ID, paper ballot. It's really fucking simple, guys. Like Thailand does it or random countries do it. And then I've been laughing at Twitter. People on Twitter are like, wait, Americans really just drop off their vote in a random box on the street? Mm. Like people are shocked to hear how we do it. And we're supposed to be like the leader of the world. And, uh, Obviously, we're not leading the world to uh, have free and fair elections. We're reading the wor- leading the world in electing Democrats, you know? Exactly, bro. So. Um, all right, our next clip is out of Pennsylvania. I can't confirm what is going on here, but I want to just play it, and then we can kind of make, you know, judge for ourselves. It's a testimonial from this guy. It's a testimonial from this guy, and he says that he's been in line, and then a random group of foreigners, people that don't speak English— cut the whole line and were told they could vote even if they're not registered and all this weird stuff. So let's just let it play. No, they had these people, they, they had about 12 of them walked in, they were all foreigners, and then they took them up, they, these younger people helped them to fill out, they, they say vote PA today, yep. and then they vote took them up, yep. and somehow they beat a two-hour line, and then they walked Build up the into wall. one lady, they were even asking <laughs> her, they're the like, we don't have you in the system, your name's not right. And they're like, oh, well, we'll take it back and change it. Yeah. How do you change your damn name? Exactly. Yeah. Well. So there they are walking in. We had to blur their faces because we don't want to dox anybody. Yeah. Uh, but pretty sketchy. And then can you read the, well, they were, the it's, context? It explains it exactly as the guy said. One lady was told she's not in the system. The person told her, don't worry, we'll fix it. They were wearing Harris Walt stickers. They were directed by translators and bypassed what was said to be a two-hour line. Uh, And the tweet says, this occurred at South Park Ice Rink, Bethel Park, PA. Bethel Park. 
Yeah, so that's what people just march on in. They don't speak English, but they're coming to vote. Yo vote. Mm. Yo vote. Yo votar. And they cut the line, which is weird. Yeah. I don't understand who has that privilege. It's not mm-hmm. like they're old people or they're from the hospital or something. Yeah. Um, and then we have to kind of contextualize it. Uh, um, we have these billboards that were put up by the DHS. Yeah. Can you read what it says? The DHS billboard, uh, in parentheses, supported by Kamala Harris, will only encourage and incentivize illegal immigration and the abuse of the asylum system to continue. This leads to record numbers of illegal aliens pouring across the border into our communities with little to no vetting. President Trump will stop the invasion. And then this DHS uh, billboard says your brother uh, has immigration custody in immigration custody has rights. And so it's like a we're here to help free legal service. Your father, brother, neighbor, mother, everybody has the right to free legal services to fight for them to stay in the country where they came illegally. And then if you look at the illegal population growing average, um, it was 515% in swing states in the past three years. We have a chart here that compares 2021 to 2024. Look at the increase in illegals in swing states. Arizona, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, all huge. Wisconsin, big. It's bad. You can connect the data points again, allegedly. The plan is playing out, right? You can kind of see the plan. We have one right now election to stop it basically yeah and then next we have um they had a they had drag queen shows outside the voting places to you know, maybe appeal to some last minute voters who are on the fence that's it that settles it for me <laughs> just switched i don't know who that appeals to or how that's on voter intimidation all right, well, that's the end of our discrepancy section. Um, nothing crazy, but yeah. we're, we're seeing some stuff. You guys are seeing it online, too. It's all alleged, but, you know, it's getting shaky, and it kind of reaches a tipping point when it comes to Election Day, and there's tons of information, and there's tons of, like, freakouts and fires to put out, and I just hope we have the capacity to handle it because – Based on some of this shit, you know they're trying to pull a fastball in one way or another, right? Yeah, it's going to be close – not because it's actually close, but it's going to be close because they're they're scheming. Yeah, they're scheming. They have a plan and they're going to try and execute it. Mm-hmm. Um, we have our final uh, battleground polls for uh, the the election. And again, this is one poll from Atlas Intel. This is one poll, but uh, people are touting this as the most accurate pollster from 2020. The person who got uh, or the company who got it closest. And so Arizona, Trump plus five, North Carolina, Trump plus four, Nevada, Trump plus four, Georgia, Trump plus two, Pennsylvania, closer, plus one, Michigan, plus one, Wisconsin, plus 0.3. So clean sweep Mm -hmm. of the swing states there. Which is, you know, clean sweep. But then if you kind of look at their plan, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, that's where it's closest. And Mm -hmm. those are the three they're going to try and do. Yeah. So keep that in mind. And then Kamala had, remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about Kamala's rally and then how they had the data from the cell phones yeah. and they were able to figure out who's been to multiple rallies, where they came from. We have another one of those. Uh, GPS, 31,834 mobile devices at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. for Kamala Harris's rally. 91% have attended three or more rallies. And uh, it says 11,000 were from Atlanta, Georgia, followed by 6,500 from California. Um, and a lot of people were also involved in uh, Antifa BLM pr- uh, protests and riots in the past. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because D.C. is like 95 percent Democrat. And if you got to bust people in there, you got a bad time. right? You can't even get people from D.C. to show up and you have to bust everyone in, have this fake moment. And then this guy, this Ron DeSantis type, he found all the buses where they were parked right next to the rally. What's up, everyone? I'm like 100 feet away. From the entrance to Kamala Harris's big rally in DC, and look what I found. Lines of buses. And we can fast forward it and kind of just scrub through, but you see bus, 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 bus. That's yeah. where all the people came from. It's a full-time job for them. I know. It's election season. They probably get paid like 50 bucks a day plus a food stipend or maybe a hotel. And they just this is what they do. This yeah. is a little part-time job. No, door dashing sucks. I, I'm been tired of door dashing. I can go pretend to be a Kamala supporter for about a month and a half, and it pays better, right? Or it pays about the same. Mm-hmm. So feels good. And then, uh, obviously, we had the uh, Trump 
fans being called uh, garbage by Joe Biden situation. And then in response to that, Trump was wearing high viz at a rally. Here it is playing just in the background. And I, you know, some of you guys know me from my man in the street days. Yeah. I invented dressing like a garbage man. High viz. Yeah, you did. I used to wear that all the time and no one got it. Mm hmm. And I used to speak, oh, I'm just a normal guy. I'm just, you know, here to get interview people. Oh, I'm the I'm the mailman. I'm the post, you know, I'm the I'm the fat garbage man. <laughs> fat garbage man. <laughs> I'm yeah. a tow truck driver. You just answer some questions. Uh well, that caught on. And yeah. Trump's a show watcher. Yeah. It's a wink and a nod from the big guy. Feels good. Feels really good. Um, next, let's play the Doug Emhoff clip. I don't want to preface it with anything. I just want it to play. Now Anyone can say the right things on the campaign trail and then go home and turn it off. But that's not Kamala. Because when Kamala walks through the door at the end of the day, that door has a mezuzah on it. And three months from now, with your help, the White House residents could, I got to check first, could have a mezuzah on its doorpost. Guys, we need to vote early and in person. You need to vote right now. Uh, yeah. You're going to put a mazoo on the way A mazoo. Oh, oh, that's what I want. I know. It's it's not good uh, in a Christian country, but um, mazoo in the White House, if Kamala's elected, is going to be honestly one of the least of our problems. How about another 20 mil? You want another 20 mil illegals? You want random Ohio towns stuffed with Africans? Because they're coming. Well, that's all coming anyway. The and door. then they're going to mezuzah us too. <laughs> and then that's going to be the cherry on top. All right. You're you're right. Fair. Oh, man. Ugly. Yeah. The mezuzah. And then it's almost like a full circle thing. Yeah. Where you let in all the illegals, you ruin the money, you promote abortion and discourage families. And then when it's all done... And you put the mezuzah on. <laughs> you put the mezuzah on. It's an ugly picture. <laughs> All right, last thing. Can you read the meme uh, just to sum up the election? Bill Clinton, George Bush, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris have held power for 28 of the last 32 years, yet all of them are blaming Trump, all the while claiming they have the answers to America's problems. Weird. That sums it up. I know. The, the it's We're witnessing the uh, throes of mania from the establishment they're really kicking trying their best to uh convince you one last time how trump's the real issue and they're warmongering and uh devaluing the dollar they're all good right? and they've done this forever this is like your guys's full-time job trump just got here he's trying to help it's crazy you guys have been doing this forever and this is the this is what you did yep All right, we're into the final page of housekeeping, my page, where I can say whatever I want. Before we get there, make sure you guys tickle the post. Help us juice the algo. Leave a like, leave a comment, comment again, start yapping. Go vote, men. Go vote. Take your friends. Um, And, you know, a lot of times people think, like, oh, I'm not registered. Oh, I didn't check. There's resources to check online. You can see where you're at registration-wise. A lot of them, you can just actually go in and be like, no, I got to update my address in person right now. So got to be doing stuff like that shoehorning yourself in there don't be afraid because oh i I let my thing lapse or something just go and kind of shove yourself in there because if you live in the state you can vote in the state right yeah so exactly bro uh and then notifications need to be on and p.o box (laughs) (laughs) and p.o box needs to be full all right i'm gonna go kind of quick through this because i got so much stuff yeah and also we're probably short on time um aoc uh who people think is pregnant She was talking about whatever, and then look what she does when she mentions the word God. I do not want to do four more years of resistance nonsense under Donald Trump, okay? Like, good God. Like, do we... That was weird. Hand over the eye thing, schizo? Cover the eye. That's like an Illuminati thing. And then when you're talking about God, like those people are Luciferians, so it's like an anti-God thing. It's like a symbolism, uh, (laughs) Jay-Z type thing. So that was weird that she's mentioning God and then it's like an anti-Trump message. And then when you say God, you have to put a thing over one of your eyes to kind of wink and okay. dog whistle to the bad guys. All right. All right. I thought you were going quick during all this. All right. Selena Gomez has a, a hoof. She's a skinwalker. Look at her foot. Look at her foot. What is, what is that? <laughs> and then it turns back to normal. That's a hoof. That's a curled up hoof. That's a skinwalker hoof. Back to normal. Back to normal. There's something going on there. 
Okay. It's a skinwalker type thing. Okay. It's like a little skinwalker glitch. All right, next, uh, they released a high-def image of a UFO mothership. Yeah, Pentagon chief reveals high-res photo of a UFO mothership, a huge mini city floating in the sky. I think it's just some sort of cloud phenomenon. What do you think it is? I think think it's it's a, yeah, I think it's a mothership. Okay. And then there's another cloud phenomenon called uh, sprites. Yeah. And that's what they look like, too. Fascinating. And then is it a cloud phenomenon, or is it alien shit? Okay. It's pretty obvious. All right. Those sprites are pretty obvious, too. Okay. Um, next, we have a juxtaposed section. Here we have Kamala with Michelle Obama. This election is going to be close, but we are going to win. So what I need everybody to do is get out and vote. So Michelle but Obama's like 6'6", six, six, and Kamala's what, 4'8"? Four, four this is a watermarked meme from someone, and they shrunk Kamala. But look how big Michelle Obama is. Yeah, pretty compelling. <laughs> <laughs> it's All like, right. So it's, I know it's a meme. I know it's all Photoshop, but Michelle Obama still looks pretty gigantic in that. Yeah, she's pretty big. All right. You know, think she's a man. And then also Alex Jones makes the point that with women, you could put two heads on their shoulders. And with men, you could put three. Michelle Obama's got a three. Okay. Next, we have uh, Taylor Swift, who's also gigantic, apparently. She's a tight end as well. Oh, we probably can't play this music. Yeah, we have no music. They're playing something acoustically, but there's like a normal sized girl singer, and then there's Taylor Swift. She's huge. Looking like Slender Man and shit. I think that's a small woman. It's a small woman, but that woman's also in the foreground. Yeah. So, so she should be bigger. She should be bigger. Those so, two side by side. It's just a juxtaposition section. All right. Okay. So that's the section. Uh-oh. Big girl, small girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think we cut some important voter information. <laughs> A lot of women in Hollywood are men. Okay. All Everyone right. knows that. Everyone knows that. Okay. All right. Next, let's play the Kamala thing. There's a skinwalker demon at her rally. Have you guys seen this clip at the Kamala rally? We got the Nevada rally full speech. Watch this person here. It's been about two minutes. Everything's normal until this happens. And I have to say, for years, I've been so proud to work by your side when um, I was in California. So sometimes the skinwalkers, they have trouble making their eyes completely human. Okay. And they'll go sideways slits or they'll do lizard shit. All right. Thank um, you. Next. Thanks for telling us. Next. They had a drill at the White House a few days ago. Um, it was a big evacuation continuation of government drill, I Uh-oh. believe. And they had all these helicopters doing all this stuff that was like, I don't know what they're what they're practicing for. But it's like a massive evacuation continuation of government drill. As you guys know, when they do these drills, they often coincide with some deep state activities, similar to 9-11 with NORAD. Um, And then also when you do those drills, yeah, everyone's getting on the helicopter and they're practicing roping down or rappelling up or whatever. But then you might have within that group of, say, 300 people – you might have a little black ops team of like four or five who goes and breaks off into the empty White House or empty wherever that was and goes and does something. OK. So it's something to keep in mind. Like during those opportunities when everything's cleared out, you have your little operators within the operators who are maybe up to no good. All right. That's fair. That's the first thing that seemed fair in this section so far. Actually, eh, eh, no, never mind. Yeah, first thing. Okay. Thank you. Well, you saw the giant girl, small girl? Yeah. You saw AOC do- touch her eye for five seconds. Uh, the hoof. The All right. Hoof. Next, we have a Chad Joe Biden clip that I've never seen before. And if I had seen this earlier, I would have been more pro Joe Biden. What do you say to Vladimir Putin's threat? I say to you, be quiet till I speak, okay? That's what I say. Good idea? Well, what do you say to Vladimir Putin's threat of war, sir? It's a well, I, threat. Well, I, you got to be quiet. I'm going to make a statement here, okay? All right, anyway. Pretty good. Be quiet. Just <laughs> shut up. You be quiet and I'll make a statement. It is like a dementia thing, probably. He's getting snappy. But I, if I had known he was that much of a Chad, probably would have uh, voted for him. All right. All right. Voted for him fully? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, next. You're done. You're off the rails. There's only two more things left. We're almost done. I know. This one is maybe the most compelling clip from the whole show. This lady has a raven, and listen to what the raven is able to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
I often hear people talking about stories, usually ghost stories, that involve hearing something in the woods that they can't see and they can't place and it moves around in the dark. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And the first thing that always comes to my mind is ravens, as Fable's just shown you. All corvid, so crows, rooks, magpies, jays, ravens can imitate and they imitate much better than parrots so I often think that with uh, parrots it sounds quite robotic and you can tell it's a parrot but with ravens hi, hi it just sounds the same it sounds like so, a person uh, imagine ravens. you're in the woods yeah. it's late at night maybe it's Halloween spooky and then you hear like hi yeah and you know what you heard. Like, oh, I heard a voice. I'm 100%. I heard a voice. There's no one around. You might go crazy. You might spiral. It was probably just a bird. Yeah. All right. Probably just a fucking crow. Okay. <laughs> That's good advice. But there's some times where, you know, like, you can't explain what you're seeing or hearing, and you have to attribute it to... This is like a rap boy take. You have to attribute it to, like, something rational. And then that time there is there you could just it could have just been a, a a raven. Okay, fair. There you go. Thank you. All right, our last piece of housekeeping in our final page is a podcast shout out from Joey Sexton and the boys. But don't get too down or depressed. We're now moving on to our uplifting gold section, and on this week's uplifting gold section, it's about four show watchers that love the show so much, they decided to do a parody. Fleckus Talks, the podcast. The, the best, best new podcast of all the time! Let's go. The boys you're wearing the Rap Boy shirt. I know. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> you're wearing the Rap Boy shirt. Very oh, cool. Those oh. guys all got shirts. You see how that works? Yep. You shout the show out, you get a shirt. That's good shit. That was really good shit. Thank Boys you, fellas. Buzzing. Thank oh. you, fellas. We're glad you, we're glad you like the show. All four of those guys watch together? Yeah. Have fun? They don't miss an episode. Good shit. And they all probably voted. Good. For Trump. Twice. That's what I like to hear. Well, once legally. Okay. Yeah, you can't, you can't encourage illegal voting. Of course. That was a joke. <laughs> okay. Well, that is the end of housekeeping. We're moving on to Cringe of the Week. All right, our first clip of Cringe of the Week was a uh, Kamala campaign ad encouraging women to vote separate from their husbands. Your turn, honey. In the one place in America where women still have a right to choose, you can vote any way you want. And no one will ever know. Did you make the right choice? Sure did, honey. Remember, what happens in the booth stays in the booth. Vote Harris Waltz. Vote coming. The good. one place in America where women still have the right to choose. You ever been to McDonald's? Yeah. You ever just driven a car? Or left or right, wherever I want to go. Yeah. You ever go to McDonald's and have it your way? It really is the handmaid's tale out here. Yeah. Can I get two Big Macs and a uh, and a chicken nugget meal? Yeah. Three kids meals it is, lady. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you don't have the right to choose anywhere. <laughs> exactly. And then when they, it's like it makes women look so weak, too. And then also the whole theme is like what happens in the booth stays in the booth, which is like a reference to the Vegas saying what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, meaning when you do something bad and make a horrible mistake, but we're not going to tell anybody. Yeah. And it's voiced by Julia Roberts, who, you know, really relates to the average housewife, Julia. Um, and then another thing is. These, this is another example of the one instance where it's okay for white women or white people to be represented in a commercial when you're mm. disobeying your husband voting for Trump. And uh, we, white people in commercials, they can be burglars. They can be this, where you disrespect your husband and vote against your family's mutual interests. And then we added another one recently, but I don't think we ever talked about it on the show. Fast food worker. You can be a white fast food worker in a commercial. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. So they added a new pillar to the white people's casting call for commercials. Yeah. See, white people, we still we still represent you. We still represent you when it's time for an abortion or something horrible or you're a fast food worker. Disobeying your husband. Yeah. Uh, next. All right. These next two clips are people that are completely obsessed with Donald Trump and it's ruining their life. So your biggest obstacle in life right now? My biggest obstacle in life? Trump. Trump, absolutely. So Do you wake up and think about him? 
Yes, constantly, every day. Do you go to sleep and think about it? Yes, every day. Are you in love with him? I hate his guts. So the guy's biggest – so no one has real issues at this protest. He's 55, right? His biggest yeah, issue is Trump. And he's in New York City. He probably has a decent amount of money. Um, and it's in, <sighs> Spending your time out like this? I don't know if that's a decent yeah, amount nothing, of money indicator. Nothing to do all day. You're not at work. Uh, we'll get to it. We'll Make get to it. Uh, but, yeah, it's like he, their biggest issue is Donald Trump, and then they're going to vote for people who are going to actually give them big issues like ruin the economy, flood the country with illegals, uh, quality of life's going to go down, their safety's going to go down. Yeah, this so is Manhattan where they dumped the illegals. You know, yeah. all the people loitering, the Africans and Hondurans and all those people who are kind of like loitering outside a migrant shelter and crimes going up and they're using someone else's DoorDash to deliver items on an illegal scooter. Yeah. This is ground zero for all that shit. So they're in New York City where they're going to feel the effects of voting for Kamala Harris the most, but they have it fully backwards. Yeah. Um, and if you think about this too... We don't look at Kamala Harris like this. Like if you someone said, "What's my biggest issue?" It would be like issues that have been caused by Democrats. It wouldn't be Kamala Harris. Yeah, you know. And it's because Kamala Harris isn't even smart enough to understand her role as the Muppet for the bad guys. That's true. Like they don't even fully bring her in the fold and explain everything. She's just the person they lead with, and they they're they're working in the background. Also, uh, when Trump is your biggest enemy and the thing you think about night and day and you go to sleep and you wake up and uh, middle of the night you wake up thinking about Trump, you don't have to go to the doctor to get that lump checked out. You don't have to worry about if your if your 401k has enough value to retire in a few years. That's all later. It gives you a blank check excuse to just like focus on Trump, go to the protest at the courthouse. Oh, uh, I really don't need to call my daughter today. I got that Trump thing going on, you know? <laughs> and so, like, your life actually does trend in kind of like a weird way where you don't really care about uh, the important stuff, which is, like, interpersonal health, family. And then and a lot of these, yeah, and a lot of these people don't have God in their life, so they have, like, a little void or a little empty part of their heart, and they fill it with, like, worldly problems, like Donald Trump is yeah. an existential, existential threat. But if you be believed in God and had faith in God— that kind of thing wouldn't occupy your bandwidth as much. For sure. All right. Next is an. This is the clip of the show. Okay. This is a 19 year old or something who got into a little road rage incident. They filmed it. Uh, he's a Trump supporter, and just just let it play out. Dude, I've got a fucking kid in the car, and he better not fucking start anything. What's your problem? Fuck you. Trump 2024, bitch! Yeah, fucking liberal! Ooh, classy, huh? You may notice that the guy who's recording doesn't say anything. His wife does at one point. But he doesn't. He said he was only recording because it was his wife and his young child in the car. And this guy didn't give a shit. That's what made him concerned. He said if it had just been him alone, he would have been like, whatever, dude and just let him go on by yelling. But with them in the car and him behaving that way, he didn't like that, so he recorded him. And this guy here chuckles, yeah, your real mistake was that you did this on a fucking street I used to drive every single day. So in a weird way, I take this shit personally. So, uh, Palm Beach County, 561 North Palm, maybe even Jupiter. Look at this kid's face. Here's some of the stickers you see on his vehicle, and. Oh my, look at that. It's a license plate. Uh, someone in Palm Beach County, do me a personal favor and tell me who he is. Okay, so we're constantly told that Trump supporters are Nazis, they're hateful, they're violent. We're told that constantly. And the best piece of evidence in like eight years that I've ever seen is some kid yelling, fuck you, liberal. Trump 2024, bitch. After like a brief minor road rage moment too. And like nothing even really happened. Yeah. Like he didn't he didn't swerve into them. Maybe they felt a little scared because it was yelling. But if you look back at the incident now that it's done, you zoom out. All he did was drive up next to you and go, fuck you, liberal bitch. <laughs> nothing <laughs> happened at all. And this, it, this Muppet fires up the green screen video and goes, manhunt right now for the 19-year-old kid who said a swear word. We got to track this kid down. He's in this part of Florida. Let's send me who his name and we're going to get him fired. 
He had a fucking kid in his car, you piece of shit. Like, like, all he did was go, fuck you, liberal Trump 2024, bitch. <laughs> did, that's like, the biggest evidence. Like five days from the election, you know? Yeah, that's the biggest evidence. That's the biggest, you know, that's another example of MAGA. Oh, they're all these horrible people and they're going to kill us and they hate us and they're so horrible and irredeemable Nazis. That's the best piece of evidence we've seen in eight years. Some kid yelling, fuck you. The kid's probably 19 years a old. teenager, yeah. Yeah. So, and then they then they track him. They need to track him down and dox him. You ever said, "Oh, there was a sexual assault at a migrant shelter." Who is this illegal immigrant? Have you gonna- seen this illegal Mexican? He raped two 13 year old girls. Yeah. And it's like you never see him doing. And he walks for around that. New York City. We need to identify this guy and get him deported. Nothing like that. Not even close. The biggest issue is that some kid yelling "fuck you, liberal." All right, moving on. Our next clip is Mark Cuban, who, hey, obviously we know Mark Cuban's been retarded. He's all in. He's he's desperate. He's uh, doing the last throws. Everybody's on their last, like, please, I'm begging you. You got to do it. But they really got Mark Cuban with something. I don't want to say it's blackmail, but it's probably some sort of blackmail. It ain't white mail. (laughs) And now they're just really stretching him thin, and you can just see his energy is drained from all this. If you want the economy to grow, If you want to see your paycheck increase, if you want to see your business make more money and you want to keep more of that money, Kamala Harris is the president for the American economy. My name is Mark Cuban and I'm voting for Kamala Harris and I'm about to tell you why. You know, I've invested in a lot of businesses and you may know me from Shark Tank, but what you don't know is how I got started. After I left school, I went down to Dallas, Texas, had no money, got a job at night working as a bartender, slept on the floor. I had five roommates in a three bedroom apartment. I was broke, living off of mustard and ketchup sandwiches. And so I understand what- So he's completely sacrificing all of his business integrity, whatever uh, reputation he's developed over the years as a billionaire savvy businessman. If you want a better economy and more money in your paycheck, vote for Kamala Harris. I could believe you if you said if you want if you think everyone deserves to live in America and you want abortion all the time nonstop on demand vote for Kamala Harris. I go yeah. Oh, okay, I believe you. you. Want to give your money to illegals? But the economy thing, they get the businessman to say she'll be better for the economy when all polls everywhere. If you've ever seen any running up to this election, everybody goes, "Yeah, Trump's better on the economy, but something else matters to me more, like abortion or something dumb," you know? Mhm. Um and then he's lying. Ketchup and mustard sandwiches, Mark? You could have just said peanut butter and jelly. Why would you make a ketchup and mustard sandwich? You took out a piece of bread, you put ketchup on it, and then you took out another piece of bread, you put mustard on it, and you put them together, and that's what you ate? You disgusting you're fuck? Fucking idiot. You're <laughs> sick. That's like retarded. That's the worst calorie, dollar per calorie trade-off I've ever heard in my entire life. Mustard has no calories. Mustard's a... a a garnish or whatever. And ketchup is like sugar. sugar and tomato with not much nutrients. You could have done bread and butter. You so, could have done peanut butter and jelly. So he's sacrificing his entire business, like a reputation on Kamala will be good for the economy. And he's lying about what kind of shitty sandwiches he ate when he was fake poor. I think he's wearing the glasses. So when it's all over, he can stop wearing the glasses and then it'll be like two different Mark Cubans. That wasn't even me, guys. That was fucked up. They oh. had something on me, guys. They had me. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go to the next clip. Uh, the botched national anthem at a debate. And the rockets, red I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Can I go back? Can I go back, please? <laughs> a bomb busting. And I got too nervous. Gay proof through the night that our flag was still there. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. I kind of respect <laughs> it. When, when she goes, I fucked that up. Obviously, she's an idiot. You don't check if it's live, whatever. But when she got the message, it's live, it's live, she goes, end off. <laughs> she did jump right back into it. Yeah, she is a performer. So I like that. Okay, we're going to go kind of fast through the next two. This is a WNBA coach who is in the middle of negotiating a broadcast deal for women's basketball. She's not involved, but she's asked about it. Oh, there is. The negotiations are happening, and they're asking her about it. Reporting about a $2.2 billion media rights deal um, out there. There's rumor of it? Reporting about the next media rights deal. Then if you – I'm not great with numbers. Low ball. 
What, why do you say that? That's a low ball. You're saying how much? 2.2 billion over 11 Not years. enough. Not even close. Now, I'm not trying to inflate it a whole lot, but a two's nice. An eight would be better. Mm. <laughs> so she interrupts him as he says over a like X year period. She doesn't even know the period. She just heard two billion goes low ball. Not enough. You're lucky they offered you anything. Caitlin Clark just saved your entire fucking league. You better be begging someone to take Ka a meeting. Caitlin right Clark deal. saved the whole league, and then they pretend that Caitlin Clark is nobody, and they don't even give her awards. They don't even like her, and she's the only reason everyone's watching. Yeah, and then uh, she's not good with numbers, but quadruple it. Yeah. That, I've never seen something represent the WNBA more than this energy. Give me the confidence of a black WNBA woman coach negotiating a broadcasting deal. Exactly. They say, give me the confidence of a mediocre white man. Nah, this is next level elite. <laughs> yeah. Quadruple it. And she leans back like as if it's something. And, you know, there's the NFL. NFL has like a broadcasting deal that they do probably every five or every 10 years. And they renegotiate. And it's CBS, uh, NBC, Fox, ESPN. And they go, oh, Amazon Prime wants in. And then these people come begging like Oliver Twist. Like, please, I need the Thursday night games. And they, like, increase the price every single year. WNBA, there's no fucking precedent. You guys sucked until this year. Um, but, yeah, quadruple the money that you – the various gener generous offer you just gave it's us. not quadruple enough it. billions. I'm the coach. Quadruple it. All right. Our last piece of cringe is a grinder meme. Yeah. This is disgusting. Richard Rapoy, you're more familiar with grinder than I am. Yeah, well, this is building off – we're always fascinated with gay men. We always say there's no governor on the gay men. They always go crazy. Uh, you know, male and female relationships, the woman kind of balances the man out. Uh, but gay guys, they just go crazy. And we covered it before on the show how Grinder actually shows you the distance in feet. They say, oh, gay guy, 25 feet away. And you snap over and look. And the regular apps are miles. Yeah. And then the 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 grinder app is how how many feet away is someone who's willing to suck you. Exactly. And so this guy tweeted, "Remember when my pilot messaged me on grinder at 30,000 feet in the air?" And the pilot messaged him and says, "I see you're on my flight. Enjoy the ride to Chicago." And that's Which, at 5:23 in the morning. 5:23 in the morning. So the pilot gets up, plane checklist, better open grinder. Oh, twink on my flight. Better DM him really quick. I'm sure there's a safety check and like they have like a sanitary cockpit where you're like not there. You're not talking about anything else other than the checklist, but he can't even stop. And then this guy screenshots it at 7 a.m. So they're both on grinder before the average person even wakes up. While you sleep, these gays are active. <laughs> they're fucking doing anything. So I just wanted to point that out. All right. We're moving on to Urban Decay. We're going to go. It's a longer show today. Whatever. It's a longer yeah, show. Yeah, your last page of housekeeping, the hoof, the hoof had to make it in. Well, it's re I mean, it was very compelling. All right, our first clip of Urban Decay. More African migrants are being dumped on small Ohio towns. This is like the friendly reminder of exactly what we're voting against, too. Mm -hmm. 3,000 men from the West African country of Mauritania have come to this small town after crossing the southern border illegally and claiming asylum. Nearly all of the Mauritanians don't speak English, they can't legally work, and for housing, they are packing as many as 20 people into apartments meant for two to four. And because so many of them have never used an oven before, the fire department is now regularly responding to kitchen fires like this one, where hundreds of people had to be evacuated. The massive influx of people is also taking a big toll on the city's utilities, particularly at these apartment buildings. The sewer system is getting backed up. Uh, the drainage is getting backed up in the building. And then when you were responding for issues of, you know, literally feces running down the walls of the bathrooms from the floor above. That's not how anyone uh, should be living. They can't even shit. 3,000 people, random Ohio town. They don't even know how to shit. They don't know how to cook. But these people are supposed to enrich our country somehow. Immediate net drain on the tax paper. Mauritania? You guys know where that is? I never even heard of that one. It's in West Africa. It's in the middle of the Sahara Desert. It's a Muslim country. There's no fucking reason any of those people should be here. And they're settling them in Ohio where they're immediately uh, stressing the system. And the, the video goes on to talk about... Uh, 
this woman who lives in the apartment building that they all moved into. Nice. Uh, and it's always the same story. They dump in a truckload of foreigners who can't speak, can't contribute, can't do anything. The white people there are like, gee, I can't even, I, 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 nobody's helped me ever pay my rent. These people are basically living for free, 20 to a room. Like, just remind, it's just a, a perfect reminder. Very rarely do we have a news program that's like perfect. Mm. And this is perfectly horrible and exactly what we're voting against, right? I reject this. I rebuke this. This is like exactly what's wrong with everything this administration has done. Mm -hmm. So, And it's happening all over constantly. Yep. Uh, next, we have a story of a um, cop, or it was a shootout between so, police. Yeah. Um, you want to just play the press conference we'll, we'll first? Just play, let it cook, yeah. There, there was something uh, stated uh, from that individual uh, while he was uh, exchanging uh, uh, gunfire. Uh, with officers. What did he say? And if if I may, uh, uh, Chief Arcetti, you want to talk a little bit about that? Chief Lady. Sure, without getting into anything too much, uh, the statement that was made while he was engaging our officers is nothing that we could bring in as evidence at this point that would support any motive against his actions towards our officers as well as towards our victim. Was it believed to be English, another language? What What did he say? We're not going to be able to put out that information right now because I want to make sure I'm not misstating anything. And so we can coordinate through the Office of News Affairs because I am certainly not going to misspeak and have there be any misunderstanding about the statement. So as appropriate, we will get that information out through News Affairs. And then is the he screamed Alu Akbar. It was Alu Akbar, guys. It was gonna, we were going to play a game of what, it, what could he have possibly said that these cops are tiptoeing around at a press conference. And I can guarantee you if he yelled white power and shot the cops, they'd be uh, running headlines. White supremacist Nazi. Finally, we got one. You know, then she says that we don't want to say anything and nothing he said can be used as evidence as to his motive. Alu Akbar. Yeah, I think you kind of know his motive with that. Here's a headline from it. It said suspect wounded in Northside officer involved shooting after shots fired at first responders. And it's like it should read. Uh, unknown immigrant, 22-year-old CB Muhammad Abdallah sh uh, yells Alu Akbar before shooting cops. Yeah. That's what like a sane, rational storytelling person would do. Uh, and instead, these cops are all skittish at a press conference. And this guy allegedly shot a 39-year-old man and then ex exchanged gunfire with police. But this 39-year-old man was like a Jewish guy near a synagogue or something. So it's like a Muslim extremist Alu Akbar shooting a Jewish guy on the north side of the Chicago, and the cops are all like, well, it could have been anything. Could have been anything. We, we don't know his motive, and I don't want to misspeak right now. And then you have a uh, chief of police lady. Yeah. And she doesn't want to say anything. And she goes, uh, 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 we'll just sneak it into the news media, whatever. Yeah. No reports on his immigration status or anything like that. You know, the, the secondary, the, the unimportant stuff. Exactly. Very frustrating. All right. Next is a jaywalking story. Uh, jaywalking is legal in New York now. Or is it New York? Yeah. Yeah. Jaywalking is officially legal here in New York City. The new law allows people to cross a roadway at any point, including outside of a crosswalk. Mm. Supporters of the law say people of color were unfairly targeted for jaywalking by police. City data shows Police gave nearly 800 pedestrian-related summonses in the first six months of the year, with 77% of them going to black or Hispanic people. Wow. And then the whole thought behind that was um, the, in the law itself is people can use their judgment on how to cross the street, which is interesting because they also tell us that that same group of people can't figure out how to get a license and an ID to vote. Yeah. So they can use their judgment when crossing the street illegally because, of course, you can. They're smart. But when it comes to voter ID, that affects black people because they don't know how to go to the DMV and register where they live. Yeah, so they're really stupid in some cases, but in other times they're really smart too, the same people. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually they didn't even do that. They didn't. The logic was it just disproportionately affects black people. So therefore we should get this off the books. It's not a big deal, right? Mm. That It would be one thing if they said eh, adults can use their discretion. They know when it's an empty street. They know when they can cross and the, the crosswalk's 0.2 miles away. You know, they can do it. They don't even say that. They just say it disproportionately. It disproportionately affects black people, 
And then when the time comes to talk about statistics, they throw Hispanics in there too. Mm. They go 77% are black and Hispanic. Mm. And it's like, that's padding your stats, but it's racist against blacks. It's a very weird phenomenon. And yeah, the, the black people who are jaywalking, they're smart and they can see the street. And they can know when to cross, but they also can't get an ID, so you can't ask for it when people are voting. Exactly. All right, our last clip of Urban Decay is the Chase Bank glitch clawback. So JP Morgan begins suing customers who allegedly stole thousands of dollars in infinite money glitch. Yeah, so the the comeuppance is slow, but uh, the wheels of justice turn slowly. The bank on Monday filed lawsuits in at least three federal courts, taking aim at some of the people who drew down the highest amounts in the so-called infinite money glitch that went viral on TikTok. A Houston case involves a man who owes J.P. Morgan $290,000 after an unidentified accomplice deposited a counterfeit $335,000 check at an ATM, according to the bank. Uh, the bank filed lawsuits in at least three federal courts. The other federal courts were uh, Miami. And so it's like Houston, Miami, all the scammers places, um, and one other one. Uh, and, you know, come up and these guys, it's just retarded. Like they thought they were going to get away with it. This is a civil suit for JP Morgan. They're asking for interest as well. They're a bank. They're going to get their interest. It's all interest to them. Uh, and then also they're considering criminal cases, obviously. The lawsuits are likely to just be the start of a wave of litigation meant to force customers to repay their debts and signal broadly that the bank won't tolerate fraud, according to people familiar. They're not going to understand interest. Yeah. You know, I stole 20K. Why well, I got to pay back 22? I'll just I give you 20. 20. I took 20. I'll just give I took you 20. 20. I don't uh, got to pay 22. I took 20. Um, yeah, and hold on. I want to see if I if I have a screenshot here of any other federal courts. Yeah, it's like Houston, Miami, and one other, like, you, you know who's scamming. Maybe uh, maybe Memphis, Baltimore, maybe, it might Baltimore, be Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> New Orleans, sure. St. Louis. I can't remember. I don't have it in front of Oakland, me. Oakland, maybe. But yeah, there's uh, the wheels of justice turn slowly, and I think there's a certain thing where criminals who are dumb enough to do the chase money glitch, they don't really have that anxiety. Like, oh shit, that like they they just go, all right, on to the next one. What's the next lick gonna be? <laughs> Until like a warrant, uh, a police officer executing a warrant comes to get them, and then the. And then they'll act like, what the fuck? I didn't do anything. Get off me. I didn't do shit. I so, didn't do shit. I didn't do, I didn't shit. do shit. And then they run, and then they get hit by a car or something, and then it's Chase's fault. And it's the police's fault. And then why are we hunting down black men? I should be jaywalking. Yeah. All right. That's the end of our Urban Decay. Don't get too down or too depressed. Moving on to Uplifting Gold. And we have a lot of uplifting stuff today. Okay. This one is very uplifting to me. Go ahead, Bob, Bob. The 21st day of September, love was changing, the minds were changing, but chasing the clouds away. You like that? Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Karaoke? No, it's not my Sick favorite. Sick karaoke what, people? What, what was that guy, Russian or something? Something. Something a little off. Autistic? Russian? No, he was Russian. Eastern European, at oh. least. Okay. All right, next we got a dog walking a dog in the same outfits. Pretty good. You think the dog understands? No. I don't think dogs fully know what they look like. Yeah. So they can't, like, think of themselves. Like, when I show pictures of other Rottweilers, like, on the TV to Jerry, he doesn't go, oh, that's me. He just goes, like, what? The screen. I don't, I don't, I don't get the screen. He puts his nose on it. Doesn't fully get it. Okay. Uh, remember that time we had the narrow Jeep in the Middle East? Mm-hmm. Well, now we've got a wide Jeep in the Middle East. Double wide. Look at that thing. Two Jeeps, basically. I don't even know what you would want this for. For fun. You got a little oil money and nothing really matters. You you want to have fun. Wow. Yeah. Feels good. Narrow Jeep was... I'd rather have wide Jeep than narrow Jeep. I kind of like narrow. But narrow, you Wide flip. Jeep, you can't even drive. You can go. You can go faster, straighter in the wide, I think. Yeah, but you're taking up two lanes, so you can't even go on a one-lane road. But a narrow... Any turn, you flip the thing. They don't even practice the crash stuff with the narrow. All right. But wide, you have a wide base. All right, next is a Chinese uh, thing. I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, he likes it. He likes doing it. I didn't even know you can do something like that. Oh, well, you can't. <laughs> You can't whip yourself around a horse like that. Uh, yeah, and I guess I, you know, humans are capable of incredible things. There you go. 
All right, next is uh, college kids are pumped about their beef wellington. Please, God Almighty. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> boys are buzzing over the beef wellington yeah that's one for one going one for one on a complex menu item like that is very nice so i did a brisket in the slow cooker the other day i feel like that's a waste of brisket though right it, it, you know but it ended up working okay so that's something as long as it works all right next is a hot dog croissant trick Heute gibt es noch einen Snack zu Halloween und zwar dieses Pookie Spinnen. Die sind auch super einfach gezaubert und bestehen auch nur aus zwei Hauptzutaten und zwar Würstchen und Blätterteig. Ruckzuck landen sie dann im Backofen und dann wird's schaurig. So the key is you cut the little legs the way she did and then you stripe it up and then you wrap it and then when it cooks, we fast forward it a little bit, when it cooks Turns into tentacles. A, goes into a crab. All right, very good. I see a lot of Asians play with hot dogs like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in their little bento box, it's a little octopus hot dog. Yeah, yeah. That lady was Scandinavian box. or German or something. But. I know bento box. All right, all right. This is just funny, in my opinion. I think she is. That girl's crying. Excuse me. I don't know why you're crying, but I'm glad you are. <laughs> 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 like, usually those videos like i don't know why you're crying but like you're so beautiful and like you should never have to cry again like don't take him back and he just goes i'm glad you are all right it's funny all right. it's uplifting all right next is um this old man veteran who gets sung to by the 1950s girls yeah 1950s pinup doll girls there right you go. yeah this is like a type of lady you paint on the side of your plane right before you bomb japan yeah you want our rendition? I can't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't carry a tune in the bucket, guys. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I think you don't I have the marine. You had it for good. other reasons. <laughs> All right, here we go. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battles. In the air, on land and sea. First to fight for right and freedom, and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yeah, old Marine. He gets some young hotties who come and sing the Marine song. And they touch him. They like him. They were kind of flirty. <laughs> that's, that's how they were back then. <laughs> well, that's like what he likes. He yeah, likes, yeah, yeah. You know, they like, he thinks he they, likes it. Uh, but, uh, like, when they're doing it on purpose. Like they're touching him and going on. They're right, laughing right. at his jokes, Get you know? Yeah. yeah, that's what old guys like. That's true. That's what old guys like. Well, old guys, especially veterans, they like to be acknowledged. They all did some hard stuff back in the day. They like to think women are interested in them. All That's right. why that old guy got AI girlfriend, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They like that. I remember. All right, another Fluckus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Fluckustalks.com for a 30-minute bonus land dropping right now. It's going to be a great one. We have a lot of good stuff in bonus land to get to. Yeah. Uh, it's Friday. Happy Friday. Hope you guys had a good Halloween yesterday. Uh, we're a few days away. Yeah. We're there, you know? The, Keep pushing, brother. It's over. Just go vote, and it's over. Yep. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on Tuesday. Now it's my portion of housekeeping where I get to talk about whatever I like, and there's nothing you can say about it because that's the truth. And we all know the truth is that aliens exist, and they're on the planet right now. Reptilians like Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and Nancy Pelosi. We all know that they're aliens in real life. So. You know, I was, I was wondering where you were going with that. I was going to let you continue, but I think that's where you got me with the schizo shit. They, they, love, they love baby blood. They but, love it. But then I was thinking, let them cook. Let, let them cook. Let me cook on this one. Just let me cook. They we all know look. that reptilians are here, and they've been here for centuries, dating back to the pyramids. Right. Right.